level up to clear communication. Dare to show what's inside. Often we would like to see more of what's inside the other person. But you can only start with you. So if you want to communicate more openly with each other, the best chance you have is to show more of what's inside of you. Be as authentic and vulnerable as you can be. If that sounds super scary to you, just take it slow, take, take little steps. For example, say you're on a date and this person first seemed so interested in you and then after a while uh, the person starts acting more distantly. Well, maybe you just can ask. Maybe you can ask this person, um, has anything changed or am I interpreting your behavior right? And I know from my own experience, all kinds of stuff can be going on in the other person. So don't make your own interpretation yet and just ask. Uh, let them know the confusion that's inside of you. And it's such a beautiful, authentic, open thing to show confusion that's inside of you. Often people, me included, have I have tried to hide my confusion a bit, as if confusion is something to be ashamed of. But uh, the actual thing is that confusion is a very adorable thing to notice in someone else. And the only way to get out of the confusion is to show it and just ask for clarification. Another example, say it's your mother's birthday and you really don't know what present to buy her. You feel like you have to buy her a present, but actually what you really want to do is just show up with all your love and give her a really long hug. Nothing weird about it. You can just tell her oh, what's inside of you instead of buy another present that she maybe doesn't even want to have. Answer questions as authentic, vulnerable and open as you can. If you want to show more of what's inside of you, a fun thing is to start answering questions as authentic and vulnerable and open as you can. You might be afraid that people reject you for giving your real and elaborate answers. And I just want to relay the personal story because I had a time in my life where I had a lot of vaginal infections, which is usually something in this society that's regarded as um, a topic you don't share about. <laughs> and when people ask me, how are you doing? And it's friends. Or maybe maybe it's, um, I, was, I was studying at the time, so maybe it's other fellow students. I don't want to hide, you know, how I'm really feeling. I cannot say I'm, I'm doing great. So I would just answer, I'm not doing so well today because I have a vaginal infection. And then people, people would just love it, you know, the fact that I, I share myself so openly. I really can tell from my own experience, people love it when you're vulnerable with them. People love it when you're open with them. People love it when you feel safe enough in their presence to dare to be authentic. Sharing something like that is like a compliment for this other person. Ideally, your relationships involve only people who really want to know you. And so there is no too much information. So I'm saying that most people do love it when you share yourself. And if you do have friends somehow that don't like it when you share yourself, it's just um, a great moment to recognize that you might be in a friendship that's not serving for you. And recognizing that is a great step, a great first step to find friendships with people with whom you're more compatible. Talk, talk, talk. The point is really to talk, talk, talk. Too many things in relationships go unsaid. And 
to illustrate this point, I want to tell you a personal story. There have been two specific men in my life that I loved and who left their physical bodies early. One of them was a friend of mine during high school and I was in love with him for some years. And on the moment that he committed suicide, I had still never really spoken my heart. And I wish I had. And the other man was Jordan, the man whom I'm, I've been making this course with, who inspired me to, to do this, what I'm doing right now. And um, in my relationship with him, I was the opposite. I often pushed myself a little bit to share the things that I was um, maybe afraid of sharing or I shared what I was confused of, I shared what I felt guilty for, I shared what I felt ashamed of. I just, I just really pushed myself to share everything that was inside. And on the moment that I got the news that he had died, the first thought that crossed my mind was I am so happy that no love has been unexpressed and no words have been unsaid. Because we shared so much all the time, it felt like he could have died at any moment and or I could have died at every moment and the relationship was a completed work of art. If nothing goes unsaid, if nothing goes unresolved, if no love goes unspoken, then the relationship is complete in every moment. And it's such a beautiful feeling. And for me personally, it has really helped me to come to terms, make peace with his death. So that's for how valuable it is to keep talking, keep talking, keep talking. But I know from my own experience and I see it in others that it can be very hard sometimes to speak certain things. So let's take a look at the different reasons why talking feels difficult at times. And while going through these reasons, make sure to reflect on your own relationships. Do you recognize yourself in the following? So first reason, why many things go unsaid is because we make the assumption that the other person will have understood without you explicitly telling them the actual thing. When you think there's no need to talk about something, remind yourself that your logic is not their logic. Even if your spouse has been with you for already 20 years, there is no reason to assume that, that, that they can read your mind. So say that someone has agreed, you thought at least that someone agreed upon doing something for you. And then this person doesn't do it. Don't just assume that either this person is an asshole or maybe you are unlovable or you are not worthy. Um, don't make any assumptions. Just go up to this person and say, hey, in my, percep in my perception, I thought we agreed on you doing this thing and you didn't. Did I misunderstand? Or did something change? So give the other person the opportunity to explain where the communication broke down. Don't let things go unsaid because you assume that their logic is your logic. And it's all the same and they can read your mind. They cannot. Explain, explain, explain. Make sure that you understand each other. A second thing that uh, makes things go unsaid is that we feel wrong, silly, insecure, ashamed or guilty for sharing certain things. Do you want to wallow around in those feelings? Or do you want to get it out there, open things up, finally share what's inside and just see what happens. Be courageous, surrender. 
And a tip for this, when you find it scary, is just to start out with saying, I feel uneasy to talk about this. Or maybe you want to say, I feel scared or I feel uncomfortable talking about this. But I do want to tell you that fill in the blank. And in this way, if you share that you have a hard time starting to talk, then this other person will likely feel more compassion with you. It will give you probably your time to find your words. It will probably be more supporting. It will probably really appreciate that you take a courageous step to share something that's difficult for you to share. And in that way, you're really benefiting the relationship. So you might as well get back some gratitude for that. Beautiful, right? Another reason why many things go unsaid is because we're not yet completely sure what to say. And that's actually a great way to start out a conversation. You can just start out with, I'm not sure yet what I precisely want to say, but I do want to talk about it. Maybe you want to talk about with your partner about the sex you're having. You can just start with, I want to talk about the way we have sex, um, but I'm not yet completely sure what to say. I have my own thoughts not super straight yet. Beautiful. Beautiful way to start a conversation. Another reason why things go unsaid is fear of rejection. Especially if it comes to romantic love, people have a really hard time speaking their hearts because they feel so vulnerable to to be rejected in that part of themselves. To maybe say to someone, I love you and not get an I love you back. And again, I want to relate a personal story. This is a lesson with a lot of personal stories. Um, and the story is to to illustrate how beautiful it can be to be rejected. So at some point I was in love with a friend of mine and I was about to I was about to leave the country for a long period of traveling. So I decided at some point I'll just I'll just tell him in length all about my feelings. And uh, it was a wonderful experience for me to to speak my heart so much and although he was not open to to a connection in the same way that I had desired I was so at peace with it because I had done all that was in my power to do sharing yourself completely brings a whole new level of gratification into your life ask yourself right now is there anything important in my relationships that I want to talk about. And pause here the video for a moment and take your time to answer this question for yourself. And ask yourself as well, how can I start that conversation? Because for many people, the start of the conversation is the hardest. The moment of getting yourself to say, I want to talk about something or I want to tell you, fill in the blank. So ask yourself now as well, how can I start that conversation? All right. I hope you feel excited about going to start a conversation and sharing more of what's inside of you. And also to open up more in all other relationships in your life, whether it's with a lover or with friends or with colleagues, with family. Um, Yeah, and I wish for you to find more communication, more open, more authentic. This video was actually part of a um, a bigger lesson I made um, on on clear communication. So this was only a part of the lesson. And you can check out the whole lesson on my website. It's up there for free. Um, You don't need to fill in any email account or any 
payment details like i don't need anything from you you can just uh, click on this link and I, i'll put it in the description box as well and there you can find the whole lesson it comes with a practical exercise as well so that you can bring the the knowledge more in to practicality and if you go through that link you'll also find that you can visit other lessons that are as, as well on completely free preview um, I made a lesson on self-love which is a very important prerequisite to make relationships work and also of course to make the relationship with yourself work so important for your happiness so yeah check it out if you like and if you like this video um, please give it a like uh, or hit the subscribe button and in that way I will know that you appreciated it and that will help me find out what kind of videos people want to see more. Feel free to leave a comment as well if you like. I um, <laughs> there's a fly around. Um, <laughs> end of the video says the fly. <laughs> All right, I'll see you another time.